have never struggled as much with the Word as this Word this morning. Not because it's hard, but because God just kept pulling me in different directions. But this morning, I want to talk about how many of y'all have ever had your penis hurt before? Raise your hand. How many of y'all have ever had your heart hurt? Amen. What's Ham supposed to do? Oh, Did we forget or what? Oh, okay. Man, I thought I messed up. I'm in the panic. Hey, I let the girl sing. Amen. But uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 26. If you've ever had your feet in the if you've ever been through a sad time in your life, it's very important that you let God heal your hurt and heart. If God doesn't heal your hurt and heart, you're just going to ever be in perpetual motion of hurt. Amen? And if you don't let God heal your hurt and heart, you're going to pass that hurt down to your children. You're going to raise them up in hurt. They're going to be nurtured in hurt. The things that you teach them, you know what a woman that's been hurt tells her daughter, don't expect no man to do nothing for you. Amen? Don't let that man have control over you. You stand up for yourself. Amen? A woman that's been hurt, and she does it because she loves her daughter. She does it because the pain she's been through, she never wants her daughter to go through. Amen? It's not that she's trying to make her daughter miserable. In her heart, in her desperation, she's thinking, I don't want you to hurt like I hurt. I don't want you to go through what I went through. But you know what the problem is? We have got to be healed on the inside so we can raise our children up to know that God can heal a broken heart. Amen? That God can mend hurt feelings. And in the book of Genesis chapter 26, I'm going to start reading verse 1. And I might read a whole lot of verses. Y'all bear with me? Uh, you can't rush the Word of God. And I really want to cover the whole context of this. So I'm going to try to read it in my best radio voice. Amen. I got the King James Version. I'll read on the King James Version. When I pray, I, I think in King James. That's what's inside of me. Amen. I mean, I, I study and I read other versions, but when I think, I think how I was raised. I, the these and the thous and the thus bring comfort to me. Amen. Uh, so, uh, in verse chapter 26, verse 1. And there was a family in the land, beside the first family, that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down to Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, I want to stop right there. And, and, I, and I know that we're all, for the most part, grown to, but you understand, when he says in your seed, he's talking about in your children. Amen? See, the promises that was to Abraham was passed down to Isaac, was passed on down to Jacob. Amen? So when God makes you a promise into your seed, He's making a promise to your lineage because God don't want to just change you. He wants to change your lineage. Amen? God don't just want to transfer, transform your marriage. He wants to transform your children's marriage. What verse does I stop on? Who can tell? Five. 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 Amen. Let's go. Let's go verse five. Because of Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister. Have we ever heard that story before? A little bit earlier, that's the same thing that his daddy told him. Amen? See, he's telling King Abimelech, Hey, Rebecca, that's just my sister. That's not my wife. What did Abraham tell King Abimelech about Sarah? That's not my wife. That's my sister. See, things that we do gets handed down to our children. And you got to understand something. Kind of give a little history of this. This King Abimelech was not the same King Abimelech that Abraham told it to. This was King Abimelech's son. What happened was King Abimelech's son, when he got made king, his, the name he had before he was Abimelech meant that I'm the king's son. So when he became the king, instead of keeping the name that meant I'm the king's son, he just took on his father's name, King Abimelech. 
So what's happening, the same lie that Abraham told this king of Abimelech's father is the same lie that his son Isaac is telling this king of Abimelech. Do you see how history repeats itself? 